In this video, we're going to take a look at how groups work in 3ds Max, followed up with how to align pivot points to objects, and then we'll finish off with viewport clipping. When we imported our step file into 3ds Max, we purposefully chose options that had each part come in as separate objects, as you can see here. And the purpose for that was for streamlining, to ease the selection of and removal of unneeded objects. But once we're done with that, it makes things more complicated when it comes to selecting uh, and manipulating. Um, I could, for example, create a box, but you always run the risk of leaving something behind. So once we feel that we've removed uh, as much as necessary, we should create a group of everything that's here. And to do that, I'm going to select everything in here just by drawing a box, going into group, and then group and we'll give it a name like front loader and hit OK. Now if I open up my scene explorer we can now see that everything is in a group called front loader so this thing this makes things much easier when it comes to uh, selecting. I no longer have to create a box I can just click on anything and it selects the entire group. Now the beauty of groups in 3ds Max is if at a later point we decide to manipulate or edit this group, uh, we can do so non-destructively. So for example, if I decide that I really don't want that ignition coil that I talked about in an earlier project, um, I could go ahead and select and do that without having to ungroup and then regroup everything. And we do this by going into group and then open. So what this does is this temporarily gives us access to the individual parts of that group. So I can select the ignition coil and hit delete. And once I'm done, I can go into group and then close this group to bring it back to what I had before. Once we're happy with the group, we should now take a look at the pivot point. And you can normally see the pivot point um, represented as the uh, intersection of the gizmo. So in this case with the move tool, it's where these three axes intersect or with the move to uh, sorry the rotate tool, uh, it's the center of these rings. So you can see that it's roughly central to the um, to the front loader. Um, but that's not what we want in this case. Um, the main reason is in that 3ds Max interactive, um, there's a useful tool called place to ground. So it places objects on the ground and it uses the pivot point as its reference. So the problem in this case is that um, if we keep the pivot point as is, just make it a little bit easier to see, it's going to sink the, um, the front loader halfway, roughly halfway into the ground uh, because of its pivot point placement. So ideally we'd like to have this pivot point uh, lower to the ground. So in this case, we take a look at whatever is touching the ground. And in this case, it's the tires. So we're gonna keep that in mind. And what we want to do is we want to align the pivot point with the bottom of the tire. And we do that by going into the hierarchy tab and then choosing effect pivot only. Now, when we do this, you can see that it changes or the gizmo changes a little bit. And any changes that we do will function only on the pivot point. So if I were to move this, um, as you, up and down, for example, you can see the object is not moving up and down, but it's the pivot point. So we want to move this so that it's aligned with the bottom of the tire. Now, either I can do this visually or I can use the easy way and use the align tool. So I'm going to click on the line and then I'm going to select one of the tires. It doesn't really matter which one, but let's say this one here. And what I'm going to do is I want to align my pivot point um, with the minimum, essentially the bottom of the object. And I have the choice of either having it happen on all three axes or just uh, any combination of them. So in this case, I just want this to move down to the level. I'm happy with its roughly central place. I just want it to be um, height-wise on the ground. So I can go ahead and um, disable the, okay, let's do this properly, <laughs> disable um, the X and Y and just move this along the Z. And as you can see now, it's a bit hard to see until I rotate it. It moved the pivot point all the way to the ground, but it still kept um, its central location in terms of uh, its left and right and front and back position.
And there we go. So now we have our pivot point aligned with the ground. Now, another thing I do want to mention is you may have seen as I'm rotating things around, I have this kind of strange uh, shadow, like right here, this shadow appearing right uh, on the object. Now, this is something that's common in uh, any kind of m &E software, and it's because of the way it represents the objects. It doesn't represent them as solid objects, but rather enclosed hollow objects. So anytime we have very thin um, pieces, we get what's called, it's technically called Z fighting. So what's happening is, is that the program, we have two polygons that are so close together that the program doesn't know which one to draw first. So you can see I'm getting these weird black artifacts. Now we can um, essentially fix this by enable what's, enabling what's called viewport clipping. So I'm gonna go here into the label of whatever viewport I'm in and choose viewport clipping. And we have a far end um, near clipping plane. And what this is doing is basically chopping off anything from a certain distance from the camera. So from near clip, as I drag this up, you can see at a certain point, it starts removing objects. And it's based on distance. And I really don't want this much. Um, I really just want to nudge this up a little bit. And you can see once I just go one or two pixels, um, it gets rid of that artifacting that you see here.